Ooh, and with a big evil looking clock. <laughs> Countdown. Um, the evil looking clock is good because our goal here is to talk for only about 20 minutes and to make sure we leave about 20 minutes uh, for questions. So please don't interrupt the speakers while they're going. Take a note if you have a question uh, that you'd like to ask. Uh, hi, I'm Luis Villa. I'm a very former WMF at this point, uh, co founder of a uh, startup called Tidelift, and currently I'm on the board of Creative Commons, and I write a extremely occasional newsletter on open and AI. Uh, and we are here today to talk about the Wikimedia Foundation's AI activities. So um, uh, I'm going to introduce our speakers real quick, and then we'll get uh, right into it. Or I'll, I'll let them uh, introduce themselves. Uh, Layla, why don't you, or Mariana, you're... <laughs> Hi, Mariana Pinchuk, uh, future audiences at the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, also note that there is a QR code and a URL for a survey. It's just a little survey of general questions about your thoughts and feelings on AI. Um, you can take that at your leisure. You can you can fill that out now or, or after the session, but it'd be great to just get some feedback. Thanks. Hey, everyone. I'm Olga Vasilova. I work with the web team at the Wikimedia Foundation. I mostly think about readers and readership. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Sam. I'm a product manager on the Moderator Tools team, uh, also responsible for the Wikipedia library at the foundation, uh, and I've been editing English Wikipedia for about 10 years now as well. Hi everyone, my name is Leila Zia. I'm the head of research at the Wikimedia Foundation for the pur purpose of our conversation here. The research team does two things which is relevant to this conversation, developing the models, um, the AI models uh, that we use in products and features, and we also do user testing and understanding kind of the needs of users. There's a separate team, machine learning team, that holds the infrastructure where the, the models are served from. That's a separate one. So cool. Well, thank, thank you. Very much. So we're going to really tackle two big topics today. We're going to start with how are uh, machine learning and AI, and I realize that these terms are a little bit loaded and complex. Please cut us some slack because we're trying to... Uh, compress everything into 40 minutes. So machine learning, AI, how are these capabilities getting incorporated into Wikimedia tools and products sort of right now? We'll start with that with Layla and Sam. And uh, then we're going to talk about what new AI capabilities is the foundation exploring this year and how can communities and users get involved in that? So uh, we're going to start first. Layla, uh, you know, you've been working on uh, LiftWing, so that the research team can collaborate with ML and product. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so the LiftWing is hosted and managed by the machine learning team at the Wikimedia Foundation. I can talk about the, the model uh, part and you know the collaborations with product and LiftWing. Um, I'll talk first about kind of what we call the core tenets or the values <coughs> that we follow for developing the machine learning models. Um, as many of you know, the Wikimedia Foundation is committed to guiding a set of uh, guiding principles. And there are a few guiding principles that we actually draw from when we look at the ML and AI uh, technologies. One is open source. The other one is internationalism and particularly multilinguality of the models that we offer. The freedom and free, which is part of the guiding principles. The vision and mission of the Wikimedia Foundation focuses heavily on humans, and that's what we center. The work that we do is to enable and empower the humans to do the work that they want to do on the projects, all of you, more efficiently, more effectively. Um, the foundation is committed to human rights policy and privacy policy, of course, and those, again, inform the way we choose uh, which products and basically what kind of AI uh, technologies to use and offer. And lastly, uh, we have technical um, considerations uh, beyond everything that I said. This can be infrastructure um, um, limitations or constraints that we need to consider. Uh, when we are talking about the large language models, we, we need to uh, think about the effectiveness of these models, the readiness for the projects. And these are some of the you know, more kind of technical considerations that we have. Uh, I'll pass it to Sam to talk about some of the products uh, and how we work on products, uh, developing AI and using them. Yeah, thanks. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about a project that we're working on at the moment called Auto Moderator. Um, it's a, basically an anti-vandalism bot that can work on, on any Wikimedia project or any Wikipedia project. Um, and we're using a machine learning model for that at the moment. So it's a new model called Revert Risk that the research team has been working on. Um, and really, when we decided to use a machine learning model to kind of solve the problems that we were thinking about, really, we were looking to the community, um, the existing anti-vandalism bots that are out there 
use machine learning to kind of score these these edits and make decisions. And so that seemed like the obvious place for us to start, to start exploring, does this make sense? I will slow down, sorry. Um, <laughs> and so we turned to the research team. They had been working on uh, this new revert risk model, and that seemed like a perfect fit. It's a, you know, can we decide should a re revision be reverted or not? We get a score for that. And really for us then, the first question was not, let's dive in and start building a tool around this. It was, is this model good enough for the community? You know, do, do editors think this is trustworthy enough, you know, produces the right kind of results? And so before we wrote any lines of code, we went through a whole testing process. We generated some data sets, we scored a bunch of edits, we shared that pretty widely with the community and really were trying to get that feedback. Is this model good enough? Do you trust it? Should we move ahead with this product development? Ultimately, we could have spent six months, 12 months building something and then found out that actually the model just wasn't good enough, the community didn't trust it. So that's how it went for Auto Moderator, um, and we've been using that model now for a little while. It's the model that we're using first is just a machine learning model. Um, speaking about terminology being confusing, um, we're hoping to move to a model that integrates a large language model that can do a bit more um, uh, kind of complex uh, reading of the actual text of an edit and then use that to, to generate its scores as well. So I'm quite excited to see if that improves things as much as we, we hope it will. Is there an estimate on a timeline for that or still TBD? Yeah, so uh, at the moment, Automoderator is deployed on Turkish Wikipedia. We're doing a test there. We're hoping to get it on some more uh, wikis in the coming weeks. If you're interested in trialing it, please let me know because we'd love to test it on some more wikis. Um, and then in terms of moving to that other model, there's some technical considerations we need to make. So I don't have an exact timeline, but we're going to start exploring it soon. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, this is one of these things that we've been... Uh, hoping for for a long time. I mean, my team funded some of the Aura's work uh, a decade ago, so it's very cool to see this uh, see this happening. So, I mean, speaking of that, like, what are we, I mean, let's shift into what are we seeing coming in the future? So do you want to talk about edit check, uh, Sam? Yeah, absolutely. So this isn't a, a feature that my team is directly working on, but I've been working with the editing team, um, speaking with them a lot about it. So edit check, you might have seen in some of the other sessions, it's, it's been mentioned. Um, the edit check is uh, some software that will show newer editors some kind of in-editor guidance. So when they make an edit, um, if they are kind of contravening the policies of that project in some way, um, giving them guidance on how to make a better edit. Um, at the moment, the checks that the editing team has been working on are very rules-based, um, very specific um, types of edits that they're looking at. But in the future, they're looking to incorporate, um, I think, a large language model to tell, for example, um, maybe the, the edit includes kind of peacock language, the kind of language that isn't appropriate for an encyclopedia, for example. And for so, those who aren't familiar with English Wikipedia's terminology, say more about what a peacock edit is. <laughs> yeah, so that's the kind of language that um, kind of inflates the subject in some way. It isn't, it isn't neutral. It isn't um, factual. Perhaps it's uh, more descriptive. And so, Sam is the greatest person on the product team, <laughs> right? That, that would be an exa the greatest there. Exactly. So yes. if, if I was a new editor writing Sam is the greatest, oh. edit check <laughs> might pop up and say, hmm, perhaps you totally should use a Totally objective. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely a citation needed. Yeah. Well, how can, uh, well, I mean, two questions. So you said you're working with some, uh, you know, in a very formal rules base, but you'd like to expand the rules. How are you thinking about, how you work with communities uh, of editors in a given language or, or edition, how are you thinking about translating their feedback into rules, or is that still too early to, to say? Yeah, so the plan with Edit Check is to make it very flexible, customizable, uh, really that each community could figure out exactly in which way do they want to use this, this model. No specifics just yet, but um, certainly the, the idea of giving the community that, that configuration ability to, to customize exactly how this works um, is definitely on the roadmap. The, the idea is not that this should be a black box that you just trust that it's going to work 100% how you expect it to work. For people who are interested in following along, is there anything public on Meta or anything that they can follow? Yeah, so for both Auto Moderator and Edit Check, if you go on MediaWiki.org, search either of those terms, you'll, you'll find the project pages. Very cool, very cool. So Olga, uh, you know, what's your team working on this year? 
Yeah, so I feel like our involvement is a little bit at earlier stages, which also makes it kind of uh, exciting, I think. Um, so, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of what we think hang, about... Hang on, before you start into that, when you say we, for those who aren't familiar with the foundation's internal structure, you mentioned you're sort of web team, but you work with the reading team. Say more about that before. Yes, so the web team in general takes care of the interfaces of the site, both on desktop and mobile, but most of our work is focused on readers and readership. So we really think about making it easier for readers to access uh, Wikipedia and uh, the other wikis, and for also for readers to have a better experience while reading the wikis. And I think this actually connects a lot with what we're trying to uh, do with AI. So a lot of what we've been thinking about lately and a lot of the research that we've seen has shown that what readers really have been telling us is that they don't necessarily need more content on the wikis, on a variety of wikis. Um, they don't necessarily need more ways of looking for things. What they really need is to be able to find things in a more easy and straightforward manner. So what we hear a lot is, I don't quite understand this, or I just want a summary of this, or why can't I look at content from multiple articles so that I can just get a quick overview? And those are the kinds of tasks that are working off of content that editors have already created. It's already there on the wikis. And so I think a lot of what we've been thinking about is how to make that easier to surface and easier to find. And this has brought us to the question of AI in a couple of different ways. So the first one is really this easier to find kind of idea. So a lot of what we've been looking at is different ways to recommend content in ways that are fair and privacy focused, which is a little bit different than, uh, you know, kind of how other places, I will slow down, so yeah, how uh, other places recommend content. So how can we use machine learning to provide recommendations in this different way? Uh, the other thing that has come up a lot is different ways that we can reuse or remix pre-existing content to make it easier to find, easier to read. So a lot of the things that we've been looking at here look at things like summarizing articles or simplifying articles. So for example, if I am a student and I'm reading something that's a little bit above my reading level, can, it make, can I make it easier to understand for me? And so from the research team, we're working on some models that we are hoping on experimenting with. And yeah, so we're very early in this work. Um, we're starting with a number of different experiments in these more open-ended areas. And a quick plug, one of the main things here too that we're thinking about is how communities will uh, plug into this work, exactly where does the human sort of fit within this loop. And so we will be having a session on this tomorrow on kind of really beginning the conversation on, okay, well, assuming that we have some of this sort of machine-generated content, how do we moderate it? How do editors edit it? And how do we have a community approach to it? Yeah, I was going to find, I mean, one of the things that's always been a little bit of a challenge, and I think always will be, is that that difference between how editors perceive readers and how readers perceive readers. Like, are there any, does AI bring any new wrinkles or new challenges to that, to that gap or new opportunities? Um, I think so. I think one of the opportunities, uh, especially here, is in, you know, kind of what I was going for earlier. I feel like editors and the way that we think about the wikis is, is we've created these units of existence. So, for example, on Wikipedia, an article is a unit. Uh, an image is a unit. Whereas I feel like the way that readers see the wikis is more as a learning opportunity that's a little bit more of a journey. Um, a rabbit hole for them isn't a bunch of distinct articles. It's kind of, oh, I was learning about this, and then I was dragged on this journey of different information. So for them, it isn't really as important that this exists within distinct pages or with distinct units of, of learning. And so I think sort of breaking that boundary, which AI can help a lot with, uh, is going to be really helpful and really interesting for readers to be able to learn more, which would try and optimize for, but also to understand the content a little bit better and, of course, maybe one day even become interested in creating it. Uh, just one uh, point to add to this, which is um, I wonder how this relationship and the way some of many of you who are editors are going to think about this in some years. Uh, we know that machine translation technology is changing, changing rapidly. It has arrived at a ve very good place for some of the languages and it's lagging for many of the other languages. But if you think about like your role in five years or let's say 10 years from now, you may be writing encyclopedic content 
for a reader that you didn't imagine today, right? So a reader who is in another language, who is accessing that content as part of like a bigger pull from the encyclopedia, from many different parts of the, the encyclopedia. So that's, I think, a relationship that I'm not sure how much we think about today, but it can change because many more people who don't speak your language may be reading your content who may not be, be reading it today. Right, I mean, for those who are familiar with simple English, uh, you, could you could easily imagine that some of the work of simple English becomes a little more automated, uh, though, to your point, still needs to have a human in the loop. Um, Mariana, do you want to talk about what you're working on? Sure. Um, so I talked a little bit about this uh, at the earlier AI session, if anyone was there. Um, but I work on a team called Future Audiences. We're a small R&D branch of the Wikimedia <laughs> Foundation. And our mandate is to kind of go out there and explore some of these new technologies and spaces where people are learning in different ways uh, to try to understand what are the new ways in which we can serve knowledge and share knowledge and get new contributors to, to the free knowledge projects um, that might help us um, to overcome the big challenges that I think we all see around us. Um, with new kinds of technologies coming along that um, might become the default for how people access information, like AI, um, like virtual assistants. Um, so what we've been working on over the past year is trying to really learn how to bring the value of Wikipedia to people outside of Wikipedia. Um, we've been doing that using large language models and AI and, and testing out little prototypes. Um, we created a feature called Citation Needed, which uh, is a experimental browser extension that allows uh, users to highlight um, facts, claims that they encounter online when they're browsing the web. Uh, and check to see what Wikipedia has to say about that claim. So that might mean that you'll get back information from this extension that tells you oh, Wikipedia actually disagrees with this claim. Maybe it's not right. Uh, or Wikipedia fully confirms this and here are all the references. Um, so things like this are what we're really trying to um, test out in very lightweight ways using the available third-party technologies. Uh, and our process is to, to learn and to recommend bigger investments to all the other product teams um, to uh, really try to fully productize in, in the ways that Layla was talking about um, with, a, with a free and open source consideration, considering the biases that are inherent in some of these models, um, trying to choose the models that uh, provide the most language support, all those other things. Um, but we just provide the information to, uh, to the teams about what are the most promising kind of use cases. Um, and if you are interested in learning more, uh, I also have a session tomorrow afternoon, um, and I'm going to be demoing a new experimental browser extension um, that's geared towards contribution. Uh, and it uses the, the kind of synthesizing, analyzing power of AI to um, give you more information about information that you're seeing on the, on the web um, and helps you as a Wikipedian um, to consider maybe adding new facts uh, and references that haven't been added to, uh, to the, the projects yet. Uh, in a kind of more seamless way. So um, come to that, uh, and it'll be available for you to play with and, and test and give feedback on. I installed that that first browser plugin, and it didn't work in my browser, so now I know who to report bugs Ooh. to. Uh, it's a weird browser, because, of course, um, things are weird. Uh, you mentioned that sort of bias question, and I suspect that's on the minds of a lot of people here, right? I mean, I think... Uh, the good news slash bad news is that this community has been thinking about that problem for a very long time in the context of our own content, which I think has prepared, uh, I think the average Wikipedian is a lot better prepared to ask questions about AI bias than like, honestly, the average AI developer, because they're just like, well, we got it from Wikipedia, it's not biased, and like, all you of you in the room can uh, sort of groan, and um, uh, you know, so how are, how's your team thinking about some of those kinds of bias questions? Yeah, well, I mean, I think uh, uh, the way that we prioritize what experiments to conduct is um, every year we, the Wikimedia Foundation, uh, writes a, a set of uh, external trends, which you may have seen um, in the annual plan. Uh, it's kind of the pre preamble to the annual plan. It's some key trends that are happening in the world um, that, that should guide our understanding of what work needs to be done and prioritized in this year. Uh, and in this year in particular, we have had and are continuing to have the most, the, the largest number of global elections and hotly contested global elections 
like maybe in all modern history, uh, and I'm sure everyone is aware, and wherever you're coming from uh, are probably thinking of a specific election that is either coming up or has happened already. Um, so we know that this is a year where uh, information is going to be very hotly contested. It's a year where AI tools are getting more aggressive at presenting more real looking, um, but maybe not real information. Um, so the idea of bias actually kind of inspired uh, this whole line of um, work around helping people navigate an increasingly fragmented and confusing knowledge ecosystem on the web, um, and one that's increasingly being uh, supercharged with AI disinformation, misinformation, um, and all kinds of really uh, awful stuff. So, um, so that's really how we think about it, is, is what can we do using the power of Wikipedia to help inform uh, and um, help people in this in this very tough, chaotic time. Um, and is that a role that Wikipedia could play more of uh, in the future? We know that this is how people have been using Wikipedia, right? Like they'll encounter a fact or they'll hear something and they'll go and open up a web browser and www.wikipedia.org and they'll go and find the article. Um, but can we make that so much easier and more seamless now with the new capabilities that AI offers? So. That's, that's how we think about it. Yeah, my eight-year-old son asked me like, literally just the other day, right before I was getting on the plane, he's like, so can I just ask Wikipedia? And I'm like, uh, so, sort of. One day. Right, and so the answer is, yeah, I'll just introduce him to Mariana and we'll, we'll, get, that to, we'll get that done. Um, uh, that comes to the end, sort of our prepared, structured, do folks in the audience have, uh, I, me, yeah, folks in the audience have questions. Uh, yeah, we'll pass one of those. Hi, Christoph Henners. So nice to meet you again, Luis. Um, yeah, I changed and I grew old. Um, you did too. Uh, <laughs> I have exactly. I was. I. I don't have any gray hairs. So I don't know what you're. Yeah. Talking about. Okay. 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 Um, so a couple of questions. One which is kind of follow up this morning, but. Um, my and it's good that uh, we, you have other people view is that one of the concerns expressed this morning is that we are addressing AI from a feature perspective whereas it actually is going to be a game changer in, in knowledge consumption uh, altogether um, the example I gave is I'm not the regular user but I'm not any longer using Google for knowledge consumption I use uh, GPTs uh, and I know they are simulating there they're not good but as a random user, I'm I don't I don't go for hundred uh, percent right answers. I go for what serves a purpose when I need it. So if I need the uh, I say I use a, a death date uh, because I'm a bar and when is Kennedy die, uh, die? When did Kennedy die? Nineteen sixty three. It seems good. Okay, it's good enough. I'm at a bar. Um, so my yeah my my, my question is uh, in everything you shared. Uh, you, you really are talking about features, uh, whereas I, I do believe the biggest challenge is that we are going to have newcomers coming that are going to provide totally new ways of consuming and uh, interacting with knowledge, fully personalized way, that's what AI allows, that every single user have a different uh, content when they look for a question. Uh, and these are very, 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 very big, deep, technical, philosophical, ethical questions uh, that I don't feel are addressed. Um, and I say feel because it's, I don't know if it's true. And Another question linked to that is, as technical and product person, are you working also with uh, the communication team? Because I also do believe that a key thing in us being a successful in going into the next step will be not only the brand recognition of Wikipedia, but the brand and the understanding of what we're carrying in brand. And if I explain that for a second, is with the uh, improvement in video generation, uh, image generation, we're going to see a surge of fake uh, influences even more than today we already have them but they are going to provide fake content which normally if mankind is a good thing uh, will entails that the uh, worth of trust to a brand and understanding of what a brand is and what is beyond is going to be paramount which goes very good so uh, so first where is the work and discussion about the philosophical longer term question and second the communication part? Sorry, I talked. Uh, be, I, I was about to say before uh, before you all answer that question, uh, the next person who asks the question, I will cut you off after thirty seconds. <laughs> I, st I still love you and I want to give you a hug afterwards, but you get one. yeah. 
Um, I'll go with the first question around search. Um, so this space is changing very rapidly. There are a few things that we know. The search behavior, the old search behavior, has not changed completely yet. Yeah. Uh, users are using new technologies for doing things primarily that they couldn't even do in the past. So there are new use cases of the technologies that are coming that are important for us to be aware of. And um, there are ongoing, I mean, active area of research, ongoing research, you can uh, look up Microsoft research, they're doing some good research on this front. Uh, and the prediction at the moment is that the, um, the people who are going to be involved in the space of knowledge production, what they call knowledge production and knowledge workers, are going to more and more move towards a space where instead of doing a search query, you're gonna activate agents that are going to do thif different things for you on the web or on the internet and bring that knowledge to you. So these are the things that we know and we're aware of and we're carefully following to see like how trends change, but the, the, the change is not complete, of course, and it's like we're, we're in that space and we're considering that as we are thinking about what products or features, uh, at least on the research end, like what kind of technologies we invest and test and experiment with. Yeah, and on the, the brand question, I mean, you're actually super spot on. Um, and one of the like core stakeholders of my team is brand. And it seems a little counterintuitive, like what does brand have to do with uh, future audiences and exploring LLMs? But it has a lot to do with it because uh, you know this whole idea of taking knowledge and bringing it out there into the world from our projects, uh, people need to associate that with something. Uh, in order for it to kind of come back uh, and get contributions and continue the virtuous cycle that's created this whole wonderful masterpiece in the first place. Um, so yes, we're definitely working very closely together and specifically on the kind of short video front, um, that is something that we're very interested in exploring this year together um, in various ways um, and happy to talk more uh, at my session tomorrow, just to get you all there. I know it's a Saturday, so I'm trying to like drum up interest. Come, come to my session. Come I, I was, I, I was going to say one other thing is that if any of you have very specific questions about one of the particular technologies, everybody will be available outside on this side, because uh, it's easier to get to for you all um, after, after the talk and obviously also at sessions tomorrow. So, which isn't to say don't ask in the 12 minutes we have left, but if you do have one, you can also ask it afterwards. Go for it. Uh, hello, uh, I have uh, two questions. Uh, first, uh, of thirty the seconds. One question. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, my question is that uh, uh, earlier, when uh, um, people wanted to get some information information from Wikipedia, they went to Wikipedia itself, opened a page, and read it. Now uh, you can. Uh, 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 have an AI to uh, make a summary of information from a uh, Wikipedia page or a Google search page uh, showing you a block of uh, uh, the most important information and that may be enough for you. So uh, my concern is that uh, uh, Wikipedia uh, being now an interface which people see will become a uh, back end uh, only giving information to other services services uh, and uh, people will uh, cease to uh, see it with uh, their eyes and may uh, uh, in the future they will be less awareness that Wikipedia I I exists uh, in the first place. Yeah, just a small fact check on that. Um, there has never been a time at which uh, the majority of people coming to Wikipedia came directly to www.wikipedia.org. Um, in fact, the majority of our readership um, has always come from Google um, so and other search engines. But uh, So I think I'm, I'm not saying that what you're saying isn't correct, but we've already experienced this um, in, in, a, in a slightly different way. Um, you know, Google takes Wikipedia and shows the results, uh, shows it in the results links. It also takes information from Wikipedia sometimes and displays it at the top of Google search, sometimes not maybe attributing uh, very <laughs> <laughs> clearly that that information is from Wikipedia. But um, I guess what I'm saying is that I think AI is, is on a spectrum that is already existing uh, and uh, definitely threatens more disintermediation, a lot more um, than these experiences have in the past. But it's something we've already hit. Uh, and the good news is that you know, we, we, we have not 
been eradicated by it. There are still people who know and love our brand and will find us in any given search experience. We'll try to hunt down the link, the direct link to get back to our projects, even when we're not at the top or um, not prominently displayed. So, but I mean, I think you're absolutely right that like that, that disconnection from our brand, from, from the actual place where you can go and contribute is one of the biggest risks that these third party AI tools present us. Um, and so, sort of what Christoph was saying, the, bringing the brand and bringing the attribution and the credit into these experiences is gonna be really, really key. Um, and it remains to be seen whether these um, organizations, these companies will collaborate with us on that. But I think, um, you know, they rely on this knowledge too. They're all trained on Wikipedia. They need Wikipedia to exist. Um, so I think we actually have quite a bit of uh, leverage to, to press on and, yeah. If I can add something on that. Oh, wait, I've, al I've already got a microphone. I'm in charge here. Um, uh, I mean, one, I can say with great confidence that this is a problem that the Wikimedia executive leadership has been worried about and talks about regularly for a very long time, right? Which isn't to say uh, it's a bad thing, just that there's a constant strain of awareness of the foundation of of what that means. And I and I do think, uh, but I am worried with my Creative Commons hat on, the commons part uh, is, I think, under some unique stresses. And I, I expect when we come back here next year, uh, hopefully Creative Commons will be able to say a little mo bit more. I don't think we're quite prepared yet. But um, yeah, but that's going to be a big challenge for all of the, I mean, we're seeing this in, I mean, Reddit has had its huge set of upheavals over that, Stack Overflow. Uh, that's not unique to Wikipedia, and I suspect a lot of the open movement is going to have to have that discussion in the coming year, not just not just Wikimedia. Did one of you want to add something, or we, we do have a next question? If um, yeah, no, I just wanted to add really quickly that I think that's why we're also trying to invest in both. So Future Audiences is really focused on that future state where we are seeing more content off platform and ultimately maybe even encouraging some of that content being off platform because that means we're being better at our mission, we're delivering more knowledge to people, regardless of whether they're on the site. Um, and then teams like uh, the web team or a variety of the teams that Sam is working with are working really, really focused on the website itself. And we are working with AI on the website in more kind of traditional, yes, feature focused ways, uh, but ways that in the short term will also allow us to benefit from these technologies uh, while we wait for the longer term strategy to come. Thank you. Um, thanks for sharing all those great innovations. It's, it's clear from what you, a number of you refer to that there's a shared set of values and principles that you're applying. My question is to what extent are those or can they be codified, documented and shared? Um, so as a, the ED of Wikimedia UK, I'm, I'm speaking on a lot of panels and conferences about AI and I'm sort of making up our position, right? Um, I was in a, a Common Cause session on Tuesday and Creative Commons shared their draft principles and I thought something like that would be so useful. It may even exist. So it's a, it's a question about where that sits and could that be more widely shared? Yeah, I actually almost asked, like during, I almost interrupted your talk to say, are these on Meta somewhere? Yeah, so everything that I mentioned here is on Meta or Fabricator. So they're public, but they're not in one place. Um, we are bringing them to one place. So we're working on an AI strategy paper. And that is going to bring kind of the pointers that we consider on this front, like in one place. And they're, of course, going to be shared publicly. Um, and this is uh, just like an announcement tomorrow at 9 a.m. in room one. I'm going to talk about that strategy paper. It's not on the schedule. So if you're interested to talk about AI strategy, just come to that conversation and we can talk more. Uh, room one at 9 a.m. Room one. Tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. I actually, I'm, I'm going to interrupt James before he gets in. You know, you were talking about this sort of distinction between the things we're doing with the sites we already have and the, uh, and the more forward-looking stuff. I'm curious, have you seen any third parties do any cool mm -hmm. experimentation? Because there's this sort of very generic, which is that, mm -hmm. for those of you who haven't followed closely, uh, all of the large LLMs are not just trained on Wikipedia, they are multiply trained on Wikipedia. Wikipedia is weighted more than other text sources in essentially all of the, so that's the very generic way of how does AI interact with us. 
the, where the source of that, are there cool or fun or, or thought-provoking things that you've seen from other parties? Obviously, you all are doing some of it, but are others? Yeah, I mean, I think um, uh, anyone who's following this space, it feels like every day there's a new browser or a new chat bot or a new service like Perplexity or Arc um, that's trying to... Kind of, it's. <laughs> They're trying to replace Wikipedia, um, and they're doing it in different ways, but they're essentially trying to collate information on any given topic and sort of present it in new ways using AI. Um, and I think those are all really interesting to, to watch. I don't think we've seen, you know, well, we haven't seen anything that's going to kill Wikipedia. It hasn't happened yet. Um, but uh, I think everyone is still uh, really trying to grapple with um, helping this new AI experience makes sense to ordinary people. I think everyone in this room, just by virtue of being a Wikimedian, you are far and above more technical than the, the majority or that kind of the average population. Um, and I think a lot of folks are still pretty skeptical about AI and it's a little hard to use and a little weird and what is it and where is this data coming from? Um, so I'm actually really keeping an eye out for ways that um, these like amazing new capabilities are packaged um, because I think ultimately that's going to make or break any new AI product is how it can actually interact with a human who isn't technical and who doesn't know what LLM stands for or RAG or whatever. Um, and, and I haven't seen too many experiences like that. They're still kind of rough around the edges. I think we're still very early days um, and you know every new Google AI pilot and whatever AI pilot still has a little bit of that like this isn't really fully baked yet feel well, to well, it. Well, let me present just a thought question. We've got about three and a half minutes left. There's one question back there, one question over here. But at, let, I'll say that we'll close in about two and a half minutes. would love to hear, there's a lot of very good reasons to be worried about what this means for the, for the Wikipedia. There's a lot of good reasons to be worried about what it means for the world. Um, but I would love to hear, you know, when we close, uh, are there things that make you go like, oh, but this is actually really cool and exciting, right? Like maybe overall you're still losing sleep, but I would love to hear uh, if there's anything in particular that like actually this really excites you. But let's get to these other questions first and you can think on that while the other questions are going on. James. Yeah. Um, the you, you sort of got to the devil's advocate question of maybe it's okay if it's off the platform um, a little bit. I, I think so I'll, I'll sort of repeat my earlier question that we didn't get to of of what are we doing from a safety perspective to make sure that using AI or others using our AI um, doesn't hurt the brand, doesn't hurt the users, doesn't make doesn't create extra work or make things um, worse from that perspective. Um, in the very draft version of the AI strategy, we talk about this. Um, it's very draft, so this can change. But the today's thinking that I have on this topic. Uh, is that it is important for us to continue investing on platform for traffic to come on platform. There are a variety of reasons. As you said, safety is one of those reasons. Um, there are challenges around censorship. Actually, can people access the knowledge that we are all contributing on the projects if it's just going to be um, you know, used and accessed through intermediaries, which can be connected to all sorts of governments and entities and places? So that's a concern for us. Um, we want to have the best platform possible for people coming and contributing to knowledge. So that's kind of my today's thinking. Again, like his draft, this can change. Um, but I think it's important for us to focus on that. Uh, thank you. Um, maybe I can perfectly add to what uh, Louis asked you. So I I've, um, would be interested in if, if there's anything that is really worrying you. So like the opposite of what, there's something you're really excited. <laughs> if there's something that is really, because um, from what I've heard now so far, it's, um, it, it's quite a positive outlook, I think, in general. So is there something that really concerns you in terms of um, the recent developments? Well, since we've got about a minute left, why don't you give one quick really concerning and one quick really positive yeah. and then we'll, yeah. So mm, the concern for me is the concern that Louis talked about um, the comments being extracted more and more from and not giving back to. I think this we need to solve. Um, that's my concern. Uh, that affects Wikipedia, it affects Wikimedia projects and the broader open movement that we're all part of. Um, I'll say in terms of what I'm looking forward to, in the short term, the coming couple of years, I'm really looking forward to two things. One, 
much better support for users with extended rights to do more to have access to more automation. We are now having a lot of low hanging fruits with these types of technologies. So that's what I'm very excited about. And I had one more thing that I forgot. Oh no, yeah, search and discovery, like basically bringing more things to people that we couldn't really bring. It was very hard before and it's much easier now, at least in a good chunk of languages. Uh, I think in terms of concerns, I'm concerned about the sort of huge amount of AI slot we're seeing elsewhere on the internet. Um, I think Wikimedia is fairly, um, not immune, but has good defenses against that so far. I'm, I'm not seeing huge concerns, but it seems good so far. Um, and then in terms of positive stuff, I think we focus a lot on like the generative AI, the creation of new content. Um, but in Auto Moderator uh, and an Edit Check, I gave two examples of using an LLM both for the analysis and kind of addressing of issues, which I think is a, a really powerful and um, capability that I'm quite optimistic about, whereas I'm not very optimistic about the generative stuff, personally. It's good to get to work on the stuff you're excited about. Mm -hmm. um, I guess from the pessimistic side, I feel like I'm a little bit concerned about, you know, just kind of culture as a whole shifting away from having values rooted in reliable information and encyclopedic content. And I think the way that we position ourselves on AI is really important to that conversation overall. Um, but yeah, what makes me feel really positive is I feel like for a really long time we have amassed uh, a lot of knowledge and now we have just new ways to bring it to people, not so only so they have access to it, but so they can actually learn and use it in their everyday life and in their learning journeys and that, that's really cool. People on the stream you can't see, but in the back they are like waving and screaming, so Mariana will be quick. Uh, I worry the most actually about TikTok and um, how generative AI will create new, uh, like was mentioned earlier, uh, terrible, scary influencer AI videos. Um, but also on the opportunity side, wow, generated video seems really cool and maybe we should explore that um, as a tool that can be brought into our communities um, and make new knowledge formats possible. Uh, thank you all. This is um, really exciting that the foundation is pouring so much energy into this and I'm glad to have such smart, honest, high integrity people working on it. So thank you all. The reason I did this is because I emailed Mariana. She said, I'm like, hey, can we hang out? And she says, if you mean by hang out, you mean moderate the panel. <laughs> this is how we socialize. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is our love language. <laughs>